Hello, everyone watching from your home TV screens. Uh, my name is Albert Huang, and uh, joined by me today is my friend and co-caster, Sinful Wishing. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, guys. I'm back again. I know you missed me, but we're getting real quick into this game. We have Ohio State versus Chicago right now, and we're having, right off into the bands, we have Kaiser dropping on the Ohio side. How do you feel about that? Tragic. Yeah, so Kaisa definitely uh, one of those one of those early uh, early champion. Um, gonna need one of those early champion nerfs. Uh, a lot of champions that Riot releases uh, normally are a little bit overpowered and very rarely, but uh, mediocre. Um, so Kaisa is gonna need, I think, a little bit of nerf. Um, a lot of people in competitive play have been playing her a lot, and I know a lot of my friends who are ADC mains uh, like to spam her a lot when she's not banned because she does tons of damage. That is for sure. And now we have for Illinois, they're going to be dropping the Aurelia Soul. Seems like probably more of a target pick. While Ohio State will be coming I back with a Zap ban. And Illinois is going to drop the Sejuani as well. So it seems like they're going to be hitting those targeting on towards the jungles now. Yep, yep, yep. I wonder if they, I feel like the um, Zach and Sejuani might be more of a target kind of ban than like meta ban. Because um, they both are... Not extremely powerful, but very more more towards like a playmaker kind of strategy with um trying to get the stun in with maybe such a such body for being able to help the entire team yeah. in with the uh Zach pool. Um now we have Scion dropping for Ohio as well. They will yeah. be that's a, that's a very strong top laner, so I could definitely see why that was um that could be banned out. Yeah, we'll have to see uh the jungler picks considering both teams banning out a jungler uh in the second round. Um, it looks like uh, I Love Thighs for uh, University of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, does play Sejuani a little bit, but his mains, or yeah, his mains uh, look to be Kha'Zix, Kane, and Warwick. A little bit of uh, duelist junglers, uh, definitely some fighters. Uh, but on the other side, Ohio State University, their jungler prefers Shivana, Kha'Zix, and Jarvan, uh, which are all um, kind of team fight solo oriented. Uh, Depending on <laughs> actually the Shivana, I wonder if we're gonna see that this game. Actually, I think it might be the Olaf. Uh, do you think that's an Olaf top lane? What um, I I very highly doubt the Olaf top lane. It is a possibility, but that's probably gonna be more of an Olaf jungle there. Um, yep, yep. and with the Illinois side, they're gonna be actually picking up the um Camila for a ban and picking up the Caitlyn for a pick. It seems in the bot lane, going on to I Love Dies now maybe. Um. I don't know what kind of what kind of um, pick they're going to do next. We did see Ohio hover the Blitzcrank. I thought for a second they're going to first pick Blitzcrank, which has been a, a pretty interesting first pick. I know Blitzcrank can be very good. You definitely did see him back in the LCS way, way back towards Worlds. So those great um, Blitzcrank moves. But uh, it seems like he's not going to be picked up on the Illinois side. Instead, it's going to be a Morgana which um, I think that's going to be a support. How about, what do you think? Do you think that might be a mid lane Morgana? Or are we going to probably see her? Yeah, going? definitely. Actually, um, interesting enough, uh, in my last cast uh, a couple days ago in the semifinals between Arizona and uh, University of Denver, or I believe Denver University, Caitlin was a hotly contested pick. Um, they, I believe it was University of Arizona that would, or no, Arizona State University, I'm sorry, um, would first pick or first ban Caitlyn every single round. And in one of the, and actually in one of the matches, Morgana uh, was the support with um, with Caitlyn. And so it looks like Caitlyn is pretty strong in the meta right now, at, at least for uh, this, this ASL League. Uh, Caitlyn is going to be a pretty hotly contested pick. We'll have to see how they do with that uh, down in the bot lane, but I would from OSU, we'll see the Jin pick. Um, I'm not exactly an expert in the bot lane, so what do you think about this uh, this Jin versus Caitlyn situation? Um, I think Caitlyn's going to be probably zoning him a little bit on for the Jin thing, but I did know that Acel did just lift the bands on the gun, Rage Blade Jin as well as um, Aurelia. If we see her coming in the way, and I wonder if this Jin might actually be building on Rage Blade because it still has a remnants of a little bit of power, but it's not as bad as people thought it was. Um, just because of how hard it is to charge up on Jin and everything and keeping oh. those stacks on it. But we'll see um, Malphite coming out as well. So I definitely say that Olaf um, is probably not going to be going top. I think that's going to be an Olaf jungle and a Malphite top. And Trundle will be going to be picked, which I've seen a bunch of times where if someone picks an Olaf, Trundle seems to make his way real quick afterwards into that jungle position. It could be a Trundle top, but I believe it probably is a count that um, 
at Olaf as Trundle Jungle. Yeah, we'll have to see what they do there in the jungle. Uh, Olaf and Trundle uh, were both extremely prevalent in the, uh, the past sets I've been casting. Actually, uh, so so much so that I actually started pick um, started playing, uh, and I picked up Trundle as a as a jungler that I'm focusing on right now, just because he's actually really fun. He, he's just a, a pretty scary anti tank. You know, the tankier the other team gets, the tankier he gets. Just just as a uh, result of his subjugate, but uh, we'll have to see how they play it out here. Uh, but meanwhile, let's see the fifth ban for uh, University of Chicago, Illinois. It will be Cassiopeia. Uh, it looks like that they're they're targeting. Oh, both teams actually targeting two mid laners for that second phase ban. Rise, Oriana, Talia, and Cassiopeia off the table. Um, it looks like both teams focusing very hard on the mid laners. Um, what do you think about this? Well, it's um since uh both teams both actually still need a mid um pickup and then for Ohio they actually need to still pick up. Well, there's an Azir coming out for them, so there's a mid, but now they just need a top laner to round out their side while Chicago while um Chicago no, sorry, my bad. I messed it up. Chicago picked up the Azir and then they also still need a top laner while Ohio still needs to pick up a mid laner as well as a support which it seems like quirky is going to be maybe picked by ohio to play that mid lane slot against this azir how do you think this might go i have not seen quirky in a minute uh and his his kit has been changed um drastically over the over the past years and uh in the history of the lcs and and worlds quirky is known uh very very well known that he comes back uh, with a vengeance every single time world comes around. Um, Corky finally, I mean, Corky always manages to find a, a spot in, in worlds in most tournaments every year. Uh, I'm not really sure how he does it, but it the mixed damage from all of his kit uh, versus the Azir, we'll have to see how that works just because I think that's a, I think that's actually a decent pick considering the armor shred and uh, I'm not really sure if he's going to be going AP or AD. He's going to um, be going, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off right there, but um, no, no. Corky, I believe, will be going um, in the top lane. Ooh. I was really confused by this. Okay, so we have a Corky in the top lane, a Malphite Are in the you... mid lane. Is it Malphite mid? I think it could be. Oh, wait, that actually might be If they're be doing it properly like they should be, that that's not... Okay, okay, it will be a Malphite at the top. Why I'm very interested by is the Kennen in the support. Yeah, Kennen um, support I haven't seen since Season 3. I haven't seen a while. It's going to be interesting. Cho'Gath will be rounding out the side of Chicago to grab in that top lane against the Malphite. But um, back onto the Corky thing. Corky, um, I think he's a great pick for this since they're a lot, a lot of AD kind of heavy right now. And if they, I don't know how that Kennen's going to build. I'm, I'm, I really don't know in the support, but um, since Corky, 50% of his ADs um, will actually transfer into AP, it benefits a lot to play maybe Corky with a heavy AD team. So the fact that you're able to have some of that AP and rise the enemy team because they they don't build as much AP resistance. But um, <laughs> we see these two teams. We see Ohio, we see Chicago. How about we look at each of these lanes, break them down, see how we think this match will come out to play. So we got Malphite and Cho'Gath in the top lane first. Who do you think would win up in this matchup? So this is actually really interesting. I feel like, I feel like this is going to be uh, one of those wet noodle fights. Um, Definitely not going to see too many kills up there unless so the junglers focus heavily uh, up into that top lane. I'm actually more interested in the jungle mid duo matchup. Uh, Olaf and Corky versus Trundle and Azir. We'll have to see how that goes because Azir is bringing exhaust for that Corky. Uh, it will speed his or slow his auto attack speed uh, as well as his movement speed drastically. But that Corky is an interesting pick considering the tanks, considering what we were saying earlier about uh, tankiness and Trundle being an anti tank. Uh, Corky is a really interesting pick considering his mixed damage. Uh, his mixed damage could cause a lot of problems for uh, itemization on those tanks, Cho'Gath and Trundle. And what do you think about this this uh, this mid laner jungle duo? Um, I think that Trundle's gonna bully the living crap out of Olaf. He's gonna be he's gotta be careful. I think that Trundle's gonna be very aggressive. He might even invade on this Olaf since. He's going to have that advantage over him because he's going to, the Olaf won't be able to challenge him as much, especially when he's in his own ice dungeon of Trundles. It's going to be a lot more down. I think the Corky against the Azir, it's really going to come down to skill. Both of them have a lot of um, great damage outputs here and there. I just feel like it's going to depend on decision making from the mid laners on if they should trade or if they should just be safe. Um, but now we're going to be jumping right down into the bot lane with, the, with Jin and Kennen. 
in the bot and support versus the Caitlyn and Morgana. Oh man, this is actually going to be really interesting. I, I don't know yeah. what to expect. This Kennen, uh, he he might be. I don't know. He's he seems pretty confident in his playstyle. Uh, yeah. LFCT uh, Comus N9. Wow, that is a long name. I'll, I think we'll we'll call him uh, Comus. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, that is a really interesting pick, considering uh, Kennen was picked up after the Morgana pick, considering she was yeah. you know second the second pick. Um, that Black Shield might cause some trouble down there, but it's... considering Kennen was picked afterwards into the Morgana, I feel like he might have some tricks up his sleeve. I think we're going to have to watch down that ball lane. I'm not really sure what to expect. Um, Jin and Caitlyn can do their own thing dueling, but really I feel like this is going to be an interesting battle of the supports down the ball lane. That is for sure. Um, I... I don't know what to tell you. I think I can tell you at least the bot lanes. Caitlyn will probably be pushing in this gin unless there's a lot of pressure from the jungle. But um, this Morgana and Caitlyn will outpoke most of the time on this gin and Kennen. And Kennen, I guess, he just has to get he unless they're not aware too much of his stun. Um, Kennen's just got to be careful because it's going to be easy for Morgana to spot out when the Kennen is about to drop a stun or not be able to support uh, block most of the damage gone to the Caitlyn. So in the end, we're going to be jumping into the loading screen right now. Let's check out these runes that these champions will be taking in, and let's see if we see this is just some normal runes here and there. If anybody's going to be pulling a quick one, seeing what cool kind of um, runes we'll see popping out here. Yeah, we'll have to see what they're going to be optimizing for i can't exactly see uh what is happening right now uh, actually in fact my game has just loaded in uh, just a little bit of an issue Let me that in but uh go ahead and let me know what's happening with this because my game is having some issues <laughs> well everything is pretty much normal um olaf is taking predator which is normal as the trundles are going to be taking press the attack for that amount of pressure and dueling potential he have he will have um the Kennen taking ari so i'm thinking that this Kennen's probably going to be trying to deal a lot of poke damage and trying to just be more of an aggressive support as anything and not being and trying to be like the one to get the one up on the other me team um, but everything seems about the normal. So um, you saw the two team comps. You saw how they were coming out. Let's real quick see, who do you think will come out on top of this first match? Do you think Ohio will be taking the win with this great type of dueling jungle and great pick potential from the Malphite in the top lane? Or do you think that Chicago will come out on top with the great pressure that Caitlyn and Morgana bot's going to have and then just the pure aggression of this trundle in the jungle? So... Just looking at the team comps, uh, these compositions are uh, interesting, to, to say the least. Um, for for Chicago side, we'll be seeing a kind of standard team comp. Uh, they have two pretty hefty frontliners that, that will be able to kind of shut down that Malphite uh, just because of that subjugate on the Trundle ult. So it's really, I think, based on... Th this match is going to be based on individual matchups, uh, but also jungler synergy. The team compositions are kind of all over the place. I'm not really sure what to expect. Um, okay, yep. That is sure. Really sure. Yep, I'm not really sure what to expect. Just because of this cannon. This cannon is uh, kind of thrown in, uh, thrown a wrench into uh, the team comp. And we'll have to see what he can do. I think they're going to want to focus uh, early pressure down in the bot lane. They can't let Caitlyn and Morgana zone them because... Uh, if they do that, then this cannon will kind of just be useless. They need to play this aggressively, and I'm really interested in seeing this bot lane matchup. That's for sure. It seems like Olaf's going to be getting a little bit of poke damage to the Cho'Gath early in the game. He's going to be backing up and getting some of the health back. But for the most part, it seems like everyone's going to be staying in their normal like defensive positions. Mid lane staring down mid lane. The bot of the um, Ohio State will be sitting in that tri bush while Chicago will be sitting in their tri-bush, staying in a safe state. And it seems like the Malphite and Olaf will be starting on the blue side, while Trundle and Cho'Gath will be starting on the red side. So, so they're it's... mirroring those jungle starts. Um, yes. Yeah, we can already see the difference in play in the bot lane. Look how far pushed up uh, OSU's team is into the lane already. I um, think they're doing that um, because they're trying to try to prevent this Caitlyn from pushing them in so hard in Morgana. Yep. So oh, but a Dark Binding landing already. Yeah. It's a shame, and it seems like in the mid lane, the Zier is going to be also getting some of that poke damage off. This, it's going to be the Wet Noodle fight up top. <laughs> it's just going to be those two begging at each other. Kennen, though, 
Even though I'm very surprised by that pick, he's gotten a lot of damage off on that Morgana, so he's already proving his worth right now as an aggressive support lane support. Getting uh, Morgana to pop those pots already. It's actually interesting, if you think about the abilities uh, and the kit of Kennen as a champion, um, his Q is, is, all of his abilities are on relatively short cooldowns except for his E, and that just means that he's going to be able to poke down Kaelin and Morgana just as well, and if you think about the Black Shield, uh, Black Shield can only be popped at a certain... Ooh, but tr ooh, Trundle's coming down for, for gank. They have no idea. Actually, they just spotted him. Uh, my thoughts on Kennen will have to wait. A Flash Dark Binding, forcing another Flash out from the Jin. Uh, flash for Flash right there. We'll have to see how Trundle is going to regank this. He does notice that... Ooh, I thought he was going back. I don't think he noticed that uh, the bot lane of OSEA did not... Uh, was not able to get a ward up uh, while he was ganking. But we're going to see a little bit of a scuffle between... The Olaf and the Trundle stun going down so fast from the cannon, forcing the flash of the Trundle. Wow. Yeah, that was um basically I think the Olaf is being uh, is being very aggressive now actually towards this Trundle, and the Trundle is just not um respecting enough of his laning opponent, and so he's needing to be more um aware that Olaf is going to be pushing towards him. And he needs to just not um, get too too aggressive down in the bottom lane, especially since now it's, I'm surprised with this Morgana and Kaylin are getting shoved under tower. It's probably because this Kennen just keeps getting these great hits off onto them to drop them so low. So I think that um, Trundle's definitely going to need to be um, having wards up like he did already to make sure that the um, Olaf doesn't come down when he tries to gank them. Yeah, this vision control is going to be crucial for this bot lane. It looks like both junglers already know that they're going to have to focus on the bot lane, but for oh, a heal forced out for both ADCs. Uh, a little bit of a scuffle down there. Uh, flat, uh, a dark binding landing onto Jin, but Jin with the heal bait uh, forces Caitlyn in and was able to take her down relatively quickly with that fourth shot execute damage. That's for sure. Ken Kennen's just going to keep trying to get this poke damage off on this Morgana as he backs away. And Zir, it seems like he's going to be the dominant right now in the lane, trying to keep the Quirky a little pushed away. You can hop in him, tap in him a little bit. Um, Trundle came up towards Cho'Gath, trying to help him out. But that's just me talking about the map. Let's just talk real quick about how the game's rolling right now. Do you think um, the side of Chicago are playing like really aggressive as an entire team comp right now because like to me it feels like besides caitlin and morgana trundle has been trying to gank us a lot and trying to like assist and this chogath is pushing in nazir's pushing in so what are your thoughts on how they're playing right now yeah so trundle is overall uh just a extremely solid jungler his w giving him a lot of healing ability and uh trundle himself as a champion just has a lot of natural sustain um, he is going to be trying to offer a lot of ganks with that pillar. The pillar has so much potential, uh, and a little bit of focus onto the top lane, which is not what I was expecting. Cho'Gath was bullying, uh, this Malphite earlier in the lane matchup. Not too much happened, though, but we can see that, uh, Cho'Gath was winning the majority of the trades. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I do kind of agree that this tunnel is being a little bit more aggressive and maybe even a little bit more of a playmaker than, uh, Mc McDougal from, uh, uh, the Olaf from OSU side. We'll have to see what both junglers can do and what side of the maps they focus because we can see that all this vision control is going down on the bot side of the map. So it looks like uh, OSU is focusing more heavily on this bot lane. Uh, and a, a, a gang coming in from the jungler. Predator activated, getting the slow down onto the Caitlyn as well as that root from the W. But oh my god, Kenan gets trapped by a, <laughs> well, a, a Yordle snap trap underneath the tower. How fitting. Uh, and a Dark Binding landing onto the Olaf. We'll have to see what they can do. That Ignite going down and it's going to finish him off. <sighs> what a trade from this uh, from this team uh, and Chicago's team, Chicago's bot lane. Uh, turning around that gank for a two for one um, or a, a two for nothing exchange. Wow, I thought it was a two for one, but that mm -hmm. was just clean. Yeah, I think um, what ended up happening was Olaf mm -hmm. and... But the dive and... coming down underneath yeah. the tower. Dark Binding not going to land, but he is standing directly on that tormented soil. Morgana is very low uh and wow she actually made it out yeah jin's gonna go down there great great dive uh, executed uh by oh. chicago's team 
Yeah, so, um, Jin couldn't really do much there. That was just, in the end, bad luck. Maybe if he would've shot the Morgana once, he could've got at least one kill for that trade. But that was just simple trouble coming down. Before that, though, the Kennen and the Olaf, I feel like the gank beginning, they had a great gank off from the beginning. But once Kaylee and Morgana got so far away from them, I feel like they should've just disengaged from there and not try to push so hard. Kennen's actually gonna be attacking this trundle in the jungle. But gonna be, the trundle be, will be um, escaping, not, too worried about the cannon he's just getting bullied a little bit yeah. olaf will be going to take that jungle now but i think in the end they should have just counted that as a loss and backed away instead of basically chasing and giving away two kills in the end right there yeah this ca uh this cannon is really interesting actually as a pick and this player uh Comus is showing that he does have the guts and the uh, the knowledge of the cannon uh <laughs> the cannon uh, as a champion he's he's running around and uh he knows how to hold those stuns on the passive W, um, where procs one of the uh, Mark of the Storms, which you only need three to get a stun off. So he knows how to hold that, and he's been harassing with that as well, uh, combined with the Shuriken and the Electrical Surge, and lining out stuns, uh, dishing out stuns like you wouldn't expect. They, they come out really fast, actually. Uh, you need three abilities to chain into a stun, but uh, Komus seems to know how to uh, bait people into thinking that he doesn't have a stun, or... Uh, and underestimating a support cannon damage. That is for sure. It seems like again Morgana and Caitlyn are going to be pressed, being just pushed under this, this tower completely because they just cannot deal with the, the amount of damage this cannon keeps poking them with. But the cannon is a little under leveled, about one level under, probably just because of his um, rooms that he's been making away from the lane um, since the other times. But I'm surprised though. Uh, it's uh, probably also because he died. That yeah, might have been a factor in that one as well. <laughs> that uh, the kill onto the Caitlyn uh, earlier in the game um, from Kennen was a result of Trundle chasing her down and Kennen collapsing perfectly uh, using his range over the wall to initiate that really fast stun that I was talking about that, that the Caitlyn was just not expecting. A huge amount of burst damage went onto her and Kennen actually secured the kill um, in, that, in that little exchange. Uh, so from that already, we can see that this cannon knows what he's doing. <laughs> That's for sure. Corky's now having his package. He's looking to see if he can do something with it. He's going to be heading back towards the mid lane, but I think he um he does not know about the trundle. Ooh, he's going to package it. He has no idea. Trundle's right there. Ooh, Azira has already used his shifting sands, though, so he cannot do any kind of Shurima shuffle. Actually, that ult is down, but subject going down onto Corky. That health drain is really hurting him. Flash, both, 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 uh, both players flashing. Uh, Corky trying to desperately get away, but I think the subjugate had him, uh, regardless. Stealing away all of those resists make you really squishy already as a Corky, uh, even more so squishy. And every single slap from that, from that, uh, from that club is gonna hurt more and more. For oh, sure. but a counter gank coming down, a uh, retribution kill for OSU saying, we don't like how you're treating our mid laner, uh, get out of, uh, get out of this lane. This, this map is ours now. <laughs> Unstoppable force uh, used on used past the um, the emperor's I believe it's the emperor's divide. Uh, that's actually a pretty cool concept right there. Unstoppable force versus uh, versus a wall that you can't you're not supposed to be able to go over. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like there's a lot of abilities here that are sometimes you would think aren't supposed to like stop each other. Like say um. I know that there's the did you know Alawi's W is actually considered a hop. And yeah. so, because she jumps up in the air and everything. So if you get rooted by, say, a Morgana or something, you can't ult, nor can you W. And some people just aren't aware of that because they just think it's a melee and it's actually a, a jumping. So if you root in a Lowey, you basically can kill her. So there's a lot of things in the game where it feels like you think one way of how the ability would work, but actually it has a lot more, um, there's a lot more you have to think about in it. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think... Uh, yeah, Chicago has really dominant, uh, vision control up on the top side. If, um, excuse me, uh, if OSU's team actually had some wards up there, they could have been able to spot that, uh, that back from Trundle and force a dragon, but instead, uh, Kennen goes up to gank it in the mid lane and forces a flash and does that, does not end up getting a kill. Um, kind of kind of a waste of resources right there uh a flash and an ult for no kill but ragnarok coming down into this bot lane we'll have to see what they can do with caitlin stunned up she's gonna go down i don't think they can get the morgana the black shield on her gonna secure um that and i think they're gonna go for the dragon right now yep 
Yeah, that'll be basically a free dragon for the most part, unless Trumbull does want to try to contest, it would be very difficult for him to do so. Yeah, definitely yeah. without that ADC. Yeah, everything everything seems like I'm, I'm wanting them to get that dragon. Hopefully, Ulf will be able to pick it up. That will allow them to get a little bit more of a lead. There you go with the Windrakes. That will help with the rooms, but you know what won't help with those rooms? All those wards that Chicago have been dropping everywhere. There's three control wards just in the top section of the jungle and river. They just you, you can see them placed out, so you completely know if the jungle is coming that way or not. And you, if you look on the map, all I see is red, and I don't see any blue. Because yeah. Ohio has just not been warding as heavily as they Speaking have. of no vision control, this Trundle is going down in this ball lane completely for free. A stun going down onto the Jin. It looks like he's going to go down to an ace in the hole. Never mind, Morgana's going to pick up that kill. But what is Malphite doing? He teleported in. He has nowhere to go. There is everyone's teleporting in. Actually, Corky's going in too. I don't think he, I don't think anyone's going to get out of this alive. Uh, actually, maybe the Corky ooh, gets away from that. Flash to dark binding. Five people in the bot lane. Uh, OSU was really not ready for that collapse, and I think it has to do a lot with that thing you were talking about, which is that vision control from uh, from Chicago's side. Yeah, for sure, and it seems like it's in the end. I felt like Malphite probably should have just canceled his TP and didn't follow through when he saw they were losing. But now, since three of them, um, about, about three of them dropped right there, they're now going to be having to sadly lose that bot lane turret and are not able to go any further than that. They're going to need to, I think um, Chicago now are just going to back and take what they've taken and go restock on items. And when they come back, they'll just have that much more of an advantage. Um, Corky going to be taking, luckily not going to go past that control war and it's going to take it out and be able to help reduce the vision that Chicago has put down on the playing field. But Ohio needs to probably start putting some of their own vision down. Yeah, the vision control is going to be crucial. Ever since the uh, the change where um, junglers can no longer buy the tracker's knife and drop down those wards, um, a lot of champions have been rotated in and out with that, without that without that ward advantage. Uh, that is crucial, especially in competitive uh, games like like uh, ASL matches. Uh, there is a lot less warding coming out um, overall from the team just because the removal of a uh, sightstone, uh, so you can't buy a sightstone as a jungler, and as well as the uh, removal of the tracker's knife, so it makes it hard to control vision uh, just on all sides, uh, which is which makes it even more crucial that there is good control of vision and denial of vision. Um, a lot of poke coming down, a little bit of a dive coming down. It looks like Olaf is going in alone, but he it doesn't matter. He's gonna throw the axe into Caitlyn's face and wait. Oh, Jin almost went down. Yeah, Olaf's gonna go down right there. Um, Jin almost went down to a second tower shot. Uh, that was almost really dangerous for OSU. They could have lost a lot more from that, and they actually could have gained a lot more from that. It looks like they were, uh, they didn't really know what each other were, were doing. Uh, they they weren't on the same page. Olaf kind of just ran in under tower, and Kennen and uh, Jin were not ready for that. It seems like there's a lack of communication right now on the Ohio side. They are not seeming to be like on the same page sometimes, or like one of them is ready to gank. The other two don't really know if they want to gank. It seems like they need to think more as like a co coherent unit more, say, than, in, than just being like individual thinking about taking stuff down. While on the other side, Chicago is doing a very good job of being like on top of things, grouping together. And then just like I've been saying the whole time, vision. They just have so much vision and everything. It seems like um, they're going to be pinging a lot while... Ohio is going to be now quirky with the package cutting off the escape route a black shield going to go on to Caitlyn But it doesn't matter because Kennen's eye of the storm is going to uh, Slicing maelstrom actually is going to take down the black shield very fast and Morgana is going to go down subsequently um, And it looks like Olaf is on the chase for this for this trundle throwing these undertoes uh, One after another he's perpetually slowed forced to flash and Azir harassing through, uh, through, through that wall uh, actually gonna save Trundle's life. Ooh, narrowly dodging that snare, but a little bit of a Shurima shuffle under the tower. Olaf gonna lose his life again uh, under tower. Just like the, just like that last kill. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not really sure what I'm seeing right here. Uh, what a play by by the Azir. Uh, but Olaf is, is kind of just going in. Um, oh, okay, I thought the cannon was gonna die right there. Yeah, he got really close. <laughs> Giving the thumbs up saying he's not gonna die anytime soon. And they're going to be backing off Trundle, going to be trying to guard this final turret, but it will be saved. He has been able to get there in time to stop them from getting anything else. The rest of the team is going to be coming back. The bot and support have now been switching sides. Malphite is going to be picking up this bot lane turret. 
for the side of Ohio, luckily, while Cho'Gath's going to be coming over slowly. So it seems like, in the end, both teams are still equal at the same. Both bot turrets are down, while on the other hand, the top lane turret for Chicago will be a little bit more damaged, a lot of bit more damaged than the Ohio's. Ohio's um, top lane turrets. So they're going to have to be a little wary of that. But in the end, we still losing vision control from Ohio. They seem to, they were doing a little better and they, they seem to have those top bushes warded. But nothing in the river and nor in, they have, they do have one in the enemy jungle. It's going to be turning to a zombie war, but neither of the teams have anything down in the bot lane, especially around Dragon, which will be coming up in 35 seconds. And it's an infernal one too, so it's a very important Dragon. Trondle actually dropping patrol ward now, so that allows him to now be, be setting up for this Dragon takedown while Olaf is still actually in the top lane and moving maybe to take a gank at this top towards the Morgana. Yeah, that bot lane is up top, so they're not going to be able to contest this dragon very safely without the without the help of their bot lane. Um, Trundle is out there alone, and there's not much vision on that side of the river at all, actually. Um, 18 minutes into the game, we'll have to see. Let's see how the players are doing. Um, pound for pound, let's see the matchups. Top lane, uh, Malphite has two kills over this Cho'Gath and is winning pretty heavily, I would say, uh, comparatively. Uh, in terms of gold, uh, there's CS is even. Wait, um, I'm sorry. I think I just missed a fight because my client glitched out. I'm not really sure what happened. All I saw was the slicing maelstrom from, from the cannon. It looks like my client bugged out and was a little bit behind. But OSU is going to pick up this dragon right now. Yeah, Zero did drop in towards the mid lane as they moved towards the dragon pit, which will allow them to pick up a quick and easy infernal Drake. And so now they're going to be moving towards this Cho gap in the top lane. I mean, in the bot lane, they moved from top to bot. And it seems like they might be trying to take this blue buff and maybe try to pressure this turret in while there is assistance pings coming out from the Jin in the top lane, preparing for this giant siege that's about to happen within on this top turret. Yeah, look at the uh, just look at the resource difference um, in terms of every player. Olaf is uh, doing all right, um, 30, about. Yeah, about 30 CS over the Trundle, but Trundle is 4-0-2, uh, two kills over the Olaf. So it is a little bit even up there, both around uh, decent stats, getting both getting tanky. Um, meanwhile, though, in the mid lane, Azir is leading with about a 30 CS lead. This Corky is uh, is kind of struggling against the, the lane pressure of the Azir. Uh, speaking of which, this Azir is trying to 1v2 Olaf and Corky. Ooh, that big missile. Uh, the big one missing out on the Azir. That could have been a fight turned around for either side. That was that was that was either either side's. Uh... Seems like in the top lane, Trundle is going to be running away from the Ken and Jin, while the rest of OSU is going to be picking up this Rift Herald, which will be a very good asset to their team to allow them to either maybe try to get this first tier turret on the mid side of Chicago, or maybe even push him one of the side lanes to get that much closer to one of the inhibitors. And it seems like in the end, I guess this considers that Ohio now has both an Infernal Drake and basically a Siege minion over top of the Chicago, who has been keeping great vision, but it seems like they're just not been acting on that vision as much. And now it seems like Ohio's will be spreading out their own vision with a lot of um, wards around the Baron and the, the enemy red buff. Yeah, just to reiterate on the uh, the vision control during the game, uh, Chicago has been pressuring all sides of the map with uh, with the amount of wards and, and control wards that they have. However, uh, contrary to this, uh, which is actually kind of crazy looking at the statistics, OSU not having the vision control all over the rivers has picked up all the objectives. They picked up uh, the Rift Herald and two dragons, and OSU doesn't really have any of those, um, those uh, epic monster objectives, uh, which is crazy considering their immense vision control. It seems like in the end it's just the jungles aren't acting upon it. The Trundle seems like he's just not been pushing the dragon as hard as maybe Olaf has been pushing those objectives. Malphite though would be caught out in the beginning of this fight. Yeah, but Malphite is so tanky. He just tanked up all of those tower shots as well as a full dark binding uh, from the Morgana and he's gonna get out with only missing about a third of his health. Uh, but Kennen was the one who took the brunt of that damage. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to use that Slicing Maelstrom uh, for long, considering he doesn't have some kind of stopwatch item just yet. I wonder if he's actually going to itemize for that, but meanwhile, we're seeing uh, Chicago's team barrel down this mid lane. Uh, what do you think is going to happen here? 
I think that they're just going to be using the pressure that they have, like right now with oh, this giant pool the fight. Slice and going on to only Trundle, Unstoppable Force hitting the Caitlyn and the Cho'Gath, but it doesn't look like OSU's targeting anyone correctly. Uh, everyone's kind of split up. A lot of miscommunication coming from the team. Corky is off to the side and cannot deal out, uh, dish out that damage that is necessary for this fight. And the Jin is not going to be able to do much either without uh, without the support of his teammates. Um, that was kind of a messy fight. Uh, and Chicago's going to pick up this mid lane turret for free. Uh, what do you? What, what did you see right there that that went wrong? Um, I think they were just not respecting the amount of CC that um, Chicago had on their side, especially from the Cho'Gath. Being able to knock them up and then the entire time where Azir could just sit in the back and just keep whittling them down slowly. And they, I think they had a little bit too much of like hopes in the tower would do a lot of damage and, w and would think that would be like a deterrent to them. But since they were already pushing and ready planning on that sieging turret, they just stated as a team like we're going to take this and they just went and completely sieged for it. And we're able to come and just take it away from the enemy team. Yeah, that was actually, uh, it, it looked like, again, a lot of miscommunication coming out from OSU. Uh, Corky and I believe it was uh, Corky and I think Olaf were kind of uh, dawdling around near the blue buff, not really ready for the entirety, uh, the entire team of Chicago barreling down the mid lane for that tower. They just weren't ready for that fight. And then when it, when it engaged, uh, Kennen only landed his slicing maelstrom only onto Trundle, and uh, that, he was kind of the focus of the fight at that point. Uh, meanwhile, everyone else was beating down the the, uh, the tank of Malphite, but speeding -ing of beating him down, the Cho'Gath is in the middle of everything. Slicing Maelstrom used straight away onto the just the Cho'Gath. Unstoppable Force is already used. All the members of OSU are completely low. Look at how, look at the health bars of OSU. This is such a close fight. Caitlyn is channeling that ace in the hole, but I think she's going to uh go down as well yeah the flash onto her this is kind of a close fight but i don't think trundle can do anything about this uh wow complete victory for the osu right after that because that not only did they get bare not only did they have inferno but the entire team of chicago have now gone down for an ace it was great playing by that tron by the um both the cannon and the olaf the olaf keeping up that pressure especially being able to execute the the enemy bot lane, but the Ken for keeping track of the stuns, being able to keep them dropped down. So that it, it, in the end, I feel like OSU was doing a great job of keeping their distance from the enemy team since they have such a long range poke comp from the, say, the Quirky and the Jin and the Kennen. And so they were to keep the distance while it seemed like more like um, Chicago, the whole team wasn't really ready for that fight. And they kept going in almost like as a one in, one on one, like one on five, two on five, like Cho'Gath went in, completely got melted down. And then by the time the Cho'Gath was basically dead, Chicago decided then to act on that. And it was just bad because that was their frontliner basically dead at that point. And the rest of them just crumbled after that. Yeah, and uh... We'll have to see how they set up for this jungle. Uh, this this dragon fight. Malphite is in the top lane with teleport ready. He's pressuring that top tower. Then they don't. Oh, yeah. Chicago doesn't really know what to do yet. Just look at the look at the uh, communication right here. I think uh, I think OSU has finally found their footing. Their communication is uh, kind of up there right now. They're uh, doing pretty well. Azir's gonna try and fight this Malphite. Oh, unstoppable force used and forces the flash. Oh, and a pause and goes down. Pause. Pause on the game. It seems like something might have happened here. Bot says they are lagging right now on the side of OSU. So we're gonna be pausing right now to try to figure out what the problem is right now here. It seems like you're right though. Let's run on this. OSU seemed in the beginning to be the ones lacking the communication, lacking the vision. And, but now as the game has progressed, they feel like now they're clicking all into the right lock spaces and they're unlock the, the team potential that they have now. If you look down the bot lane, they have great line of vision down there right when they took that dragon. They're understanding what each other want to do. On the other side, Chicago, they seem like they were doing great in the beginning, had great vision, acting as a team and everything. But as they're starting to lose this thing, it seems like they're not staying together together as heavily. And now they're starting to fall apart. As you saw when they were trying to figure out, should we go get Inferno or should we stop this Malphite pushing? The entire team decided to start shifting towards the Malphite, which I don't know if that was the best play, especially since they just gave up an Inferno for that. But then some of them said, oh, we're not going to go. I'm going to go maybe towards the base. Some of them said, I'm going to push out the mid lane. While then the Azir was the only person pushing up towards that top lane and decided, okay, I'm going to fight the Malphite because they thought, it's just a mouth fight and almost loses yeah. life because of that. Yeah. So it's like Chicago has just lost that communication. What about you? What do you think? And, look at, and look, at, okay, look at the map right now. The, the, the difference. 
in Chicago's warding versus OSU's warding now. OSU is completely controlling the entire map, basically. There's only uh, one control ward in the Baron pit where there's no no longer a Baron. Um, and because of that vision control and because of the map pressure, uh, Chicago just didn't really know what to do. Um, they had no idea that it was just three people on the Infernal Dragon because they had no vision. They sent the entire team, five people, down to that Infernal Drake and then all five of them backed off simultaneously once they saw the Malphite pushing down that top tower. That was kind of a weird mistake uh, and definitely a lot of miscommunication because that entire team just dispersed after grouping for the dragon um, and ended up costing more resources for their own team as Azir had to burn that flash. But as I'm saying this, uh, Subjugate, Subjugate going down onto this Malphite, not really going to be able to do anything. He did use that unstoppable force, but um, he's just so tanky, he, he was able to escape, uh, no problem. That is for sure, and it seems like the bot lane will now be taking the, the second tier of Chicago's turrets. They're going to be maybe moving towards this third tier, maybe with an inhibitor. A fight might be breaking with a teleport coming in. Yep, stuns going down, a little bit of poke from each side, a lot of AoE damage, and Ragnarok coming down, and shredding apart this trundle, so much for him being tanky, as well as the Cho'Gath. Both of their front line are completely down, OSU is in the middle of their base. Look at this, all the all the damage dealer is completely helpless, with only the help of this Morgana stunned under the tower, Malphite is going to try and run away, but Jin is firing away uh, with that ultimate, and they're going to pressure down this, uh, ooh, actually, no, they're going to back off. Um, yeah, I think, I, I guess they, they should just take that win. Just take, yeah. just take that win with that inhib. Don't get too greedy. Um, try and back with the Baron recalls. Yeah, the damage deals were le take, took a little bit of damage in that fight, but were able to go with a clean 2 for 0 on that takedown there. Able to take down that Trundle and that Cho'Gath, leaving the enemy's inhibitor easy, easy pickings for Ohio. And they're able to now press that lead they have. It seems like Corky's going to be picking up that package, heading on towards the top lane for their next taking down. They've gotten the bot, bot lane turrets. But now it seems like they're going to be moving maybe towards the top lane or the mid lane and just keeping more of maybe like a passive play now. Probably keeping the aggression up by getting the poke and everything, but right now Ohio State is in the easy road for success. While it seems like Chicago are going to be having to take a little bit of a climb to try to get back to where the the grounds they've lost. Yeah, nearly a complete shift in all all of the all of the laners' play styles and uh, and their itemization as well as just overall gold. OSU is leading with 10,000 gold. This is so different from just 10 minutes ago where Corky was really behind, getting pressured by that Azir uh, and. Okay, uh, there was going to be a fight. Let's see, they are going to try and engage onto this top tower. All five of OSU are here. Yeah, package goes down as well as the curtain call. Slicing Maelstrom going to stun up Trundle and Kaelin. Kaelin gets shredded immediately and Ragnarok's coming out. Uh, and uh, Trundle's going to be forced away from the tower. Cho'Gath, as tanky as he is, yeah, going to have to force uh, the flash out. Their front line can't, can't do much. I, I, like. All of the damage dealers on OSU are just going off right now, and and their front line is just so terrifying with that Ragnarok and the unstoppable force that I don't think uh, I don't think Chicago can do much, especially with this gold difference. I think in the end, what the problem is is that Chicago is just letting them engage onto them. When I feel like for Ohio's um, Ohio's comp, that's perfect. They want to poke from a distance and not let them get close. But I think for Chicago, they need to go on top of them. They need to start the even counter and they need to start getting the front line needs to get farther in there. They can't be so far back. They need maybe a Morgana needs to pull a Q and then go in. The Azir maybe needs to do a Shreem, a shuffle and push their the range, the range people back there, like the Corky and the Jin and even the Kennen and push them towards the Caitlyn to get that damage in the Trundle. Because it seems like what's happening is they're just getting out poked at this point in time. And by the time they get so low, the Malphite just engages that heavily onto them and they have nothing else to do but just to run. Yeah, 100%. And speaking of which, this mid turret is going down and current call going to be opened up on top of this trundle. Uh, slicing Maelstrom, flash slicing Maelstrom from the cannon. He's going to get exhausted. Can he take down the Azir? Yes, he can. But an unstoppable force is also chasing down the Kaelin underneath both Nexus Towers. I think OSU is going to try and seal this game out. It looks like they're pretty much just all over uh, Chicago's team. Um, I think... I think it's a matter of what we were saying in Champion Select, which is that uh, that diverse damage uh, from OSU coming out. Look at this Cho'Gath. Yeah, he's going to just get uh, 
completely shredded by both the Corky and the Jin firing down at him. Same with the Trundle. Look at yeah, look at look at the the ADC and the 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 pseudo ADC shredding down that front line. It's such a difference when you have that Corky just because of that mixed damage. Uh, it's so hard for uh, tanks to itemize for someone who does that amount of uh, mixed damage. Yes, and after that, it seems like they just kept the onslaught on until they were able to take down that Nexus. For OSU taking the victory over top of Chicago, going for 1-0 in this best of five series.